Uh, joining us now, Fox News senior judicial analyst Judge Andrew Napolitano is here. I have so many questions. You know what? Let's let's start with the bag there. Let's let's just start with crime scenes and kind of get your first impressions on, on what we're learning. We don't know yet who those two guys are, but as a judge, you've seen a lot. Yeah, it, it appears to me that the NYPD, looking at the tapes of those two guys, thinks that they were innocent bystanders who stole a bag. The FBI, looking at the same tapes, thinks that they were Confederates who removed the bag intentionally. So they need to get mm. to the bottom of this, because if the FBI's hunch is correct, then there are two conspirators out there who knew what was going on and who could strike again and who are culpable here. If the NYPD's hunch is correct, this is a classic example of people looking at the same event and interpreting it differently. If the NYPD's hunch is correct, then they're innocent bystanders who may be in danger because they may not know what they have with them. Wow. Look at this dot on this piece of paper. Tell me what you see. Right. That's exactly. All exactly. right. Well, as long as all of it keeps us safe. Okay. Let's move on now to the idea of the charges that police are looking at with Rahimi. He's unconscious in the hospital right now. When he wakes up, they're going to ask him, obviously, a ton of questions. I understand from you, though, that this is a, a very early look at charges, that the final charges may be very different. Yes. In, or, in order to restrain him, he's, he's in a hospital, but he's in a jail part of this hospital. They have to file charges, so the principal charge that they filed against him is the use of a weapon of mass destruction. The final charges will come from a grand jury, probably in Lower Manhattan, and that's not going to happen overnight. But this mm -hmm. charge alone carries life in prison without possibility of parole. If anybody had died, then he could have been executed in the federal system. New Jersey and New York do not have the death penalty. The federal system does. But the Supreme Court has said no death no execution. So the max that he's facing on this one charge alone is life in prison without parole. All right. So, Judge, you're probably getting asked about and hearing the calls for, why don't you call him an enemy combatant and adjudicate this differently? Talk to me about the difference between average prisoner, enemy combatant, and whether this person needs that status. Well, there is no statute and there is no court opinion setting down what is an enemy combatant. But in the one case where the federal government held an American at Gitmo, he had been a soldier in a foreign army who actually was shooting at American soldiers and was injured and was captured and brought there. And a month later, he said, by the way, I was born in New Orleans, Louisiana, and they realized he was an American. They got him out and they brought him to a, a regular American jail, and eventually he was released for, for other reasons. But in this particular case, there is simply no reason to suggest that the government has any authority to strip his due process rights. He already has received his Miranda warnings. Okay. He's already been told he doesn't have to talk to them.